Well, good morning. It's Preacher's Choice and we're going to Isaiah 55. And as we go there, I want you to think about your thoughts and your ways. And do you have a very elevated view of your thoughts and ways? That what you're doing is good and it's a high view of those things. And and the way that you're going, it's high, it's elevated. Well, the shock in this passage is that God doesn't see it that way. And in fact, we're going to look at this passage in kind of the reverse order. We're going to look at the third block of it, starting at verse 8. And you hear God's response. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. Um, See, God doesn't have an elevated view of our ways. In fact, he says that his views are higher, verse 9. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts than your thoughts. And you, and you say, well, okay, but how would you know his thoughts and his ways? Well, it goes on to tell you, in fact. And it likens the way that rain falls and snow drops upon the earth and then waters the earth. It's saying, well, that's what God's like. His thoughts and his ways, well, he's dispensed them. He's poured them out. He's done that by showing you what he's like and telling you what he's like. He likens it to his word that they have as the rain And the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and make it barred and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. Verse 11, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. The purpose? So that people might know God's ways and his thoughts. It'll do that for those that respond to it. But here's the problem. You, you hear that and you say, well, what will be of that? If I were to listen and to know God's ways and thoughts, well, the message to Israel in Isaiah 55, as they are in exile in Babylon, is that it will bring to them joy and peace and the Lord's renown. He says to them, you will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hill will burst into song before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. And instead of a thorn bush will grow the juniper and instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. And there it is. A joy and peace for the Lord's renown. The only problem, of course, is that... Um, we're not particularly interested in the Lord's renown. We would rather kind of have our thoughts, our ways, uh, the joy and the peace that we would want, but not God. And that's what the world has done like in exile then as they do today and as we often do in our own hearts. And of course, that's actually at the heart of this passage. When you look back up to verses 6 and 7, you see this. Because in the passage that comes immediately before all of this, you actually have an invitation to forsake your ways and your thoughts, my ways and my thoughts. Verse 6, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them and to our God, for he will freely pardon. See, it's a call to say to people who live chasing their thoughts and their ways that they need mercy and pardon. And that's because we reject the Lord's renown. We might want joy and peace in our life. We might want to live our ways, but in doing that, um, we don't get what we want. See, we we want joy and peace, but it never lasts. But, But here's the promise that those who forsake their thoughts and their ways and seek his pardon then he's the God who reverses all that and that you could seek him and he is able to be found. In fact, that's what life is about, isn't it? It's about responding to the call. It's recognising the brokenness of our thoughts and our ways and coming to the God who offers us the remedy. And the remedy is in that passage, isn't it? That you might seek him, that you might call on him, that you might forsake your ways and your thoughts and turn. It's the picture of repentance. It's the picture that you see all the way through the Bible. The people who have rejected God might turn from that rejection and come home to him. And in fact, that is exactly how this passage begins, with a generous invitation. And just think about what it is to receive an invitation whenever you receive it. it. It's never a right like you were obligated to get that invitation that that person sent. It's always a privilege. 
And, that, and that's what you notice here. Here is the God who is under no obligation to invite you to come to seek him. But he gives you this incredibly generous invitation and what a privilege it is. Have a listen to it. It starts in verse 1 of Isaiah 55 and says, Come, all who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labour on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live and I'll make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See? I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and a commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not and nations you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. See the generous invitation? You who have nothing, your thoughts, your ways actually don't satisfy, but come to the one who offers living water and bread that will nourish forever and will actually endow you with splendor, the kind of splendor that the world needs to hear about. And the world will see that and respond and come. They'd ask you to give an answer for the hope and the joy and the peace that you have. Tell us of the Lord's renown. And so we come this morning to Isaiah 55, one of my favorite passages in scripture. And we think about that invitation that's extended to this whole world and are we actually sharing that peace that joy with the world around us but more important right now isn't it to ask ourselves this morning have we come have we come to see that our thoughts and our ways actually never satisfy but it's the lord's renown and what it is to trust in his ways and his thoughts by coming to his word and listening to him and responding seeking him repenting where necessary and depending on him you notice that call to, to listen and to give ear is what it means to come. So are we listening this morning as we come to God's word? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, would you help us to see that our ways aren't your ways? Would you help us to recognize the beauty of your ways and your thoughts? And Lord, that you would lead us. Lead us to a place where we would indeed seek you, calling upon you, forsaking our wicked ways and our unrighteous thoughts, that we might turn to you this day afresh, knowing that you are the God, through Jesus Christ alone, who has given us mercy, that you have brought for us a free pardon by laying the penalty of our rejection on you, so that you can generously invite us to come, to come back into a relationship with you, to know what it is to be sustained and to know joy and peace. And Heavenly Father, we pray that we might live lives for your renown. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless and enjoy this day.